Okay, so here's a quick tutorial where I'm going to take you through my post-production from beginning to end inside of Lightroom. So you'll, you've seen the after and you've seen the before over on the blog, so I'm going to walk you quickly through what I do inside the develop module inside of Lightroom 4. So if you read the blog post, this may be a little bit of repetition for you. For those of you that happened, it's probably going to be all new information. So let's just start up at the top here. So I'm looking at the histogram here. I see I haven't lost any detail on the lower right, and I haven't lost any detail on the high end, which means I'm probably shooting in the cart histogram here. Now I did overcompensate on the, I, on the ISO settings, but we can compensate for that inside of Lightroom to clean things up a little bit once we're done here. So I'm getting started. I'll take the exposure slider and I'll slide that down to see what will happen if I darken it. And I'm not liking that effect. So let's see what happens if I start to lighten a little. And it's getting kind of harsh there. So I'm just going to leave that at the default settings. What I probably want to do instead is I want to control this via highlights and shadows. So when I start moving these highlights all the way down, it looks like I'm actually reducing some of that glare. So that's a good thing. I'm going to pull that all the way down. So I'm going to do the same thing on the reverse end with the shadows. I'm going to start bringing out more shadow detail. And now it's just starting to look like it's something that has a lot of potential. So let me keep going down inside of here. It needs a little bit more pop, and this is where the, the pop exists, is in the clarity, vibrance, and saturation. So I'm going to just put my default values that I usually put in for images, just as a starting point, just to see what happens. And that's 50, 15, and 15. And it's starting to look really good here. I'm seeing a little spot up here, so before I continue, let me go ahead and let me zoom right in there. I'm going to drag this up, and I'm going to clean up this spot right there by using this little slider. So I'm going to use my left and right bracket keys to size this. I'm going to click and drag and move things over so that this gets cleaned up. And it looks like right about there is pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and get that cleaned up like that. Take it out and we're looking pretty good. So let me back that out. Cool. Now that spot is clean. So now let's continue down here. So inside this tone curve, I tried playing around with a couple different settings on it before I started doing the tutorial and decided I really liked uh, making some adjustments in here. So I'm going to push these darks up to plus 38, and I'm going to put these to minus 21. And that's really going to put a little more oomph inside the colors here. But it's not quite enough. I remember the reds being a lot brighter, so I'm going to take the color uh, slider inside the reds, and I'm going to increase the luminance, and I'm going to crank that all the way up to 100. So let's see what happens. Here's the default. Let me reset that to zero. Here's the default. And here is it popped all the way up. So you see how that happens where we have it set to zero. And then we crank it all the way up. And it's really bringing out some detail in those reds that I wanted to bring out. So that's a good thing. So next up on here is going to be the details uh, portion of the develop module. And you can see there's a lot of noise in here. So the next thing I'm going to do is adjust my sharpening and noise levels. So I have, again, I have some default values. I don't like pushing the noise much past 65. And I don't like pushing the, excuse me, the sharpening much past 65. And I don't like much pushing the noise past 60. So when you push your sharpening past 65, what will happen is you'll start to get a lot of halo effects. It also depends on the nature of the image, of course. But much past 65, and you risk getting that halo effect on images. So I usually will stop there. On the noise reduction, once you start going past the 60 degree level, and if we slide this back up and look at the detail here, you see it's gotten pretty well cleaned up and it's not gotten too buttery or too fake looking. The only thing that really looks buttery is this portion along here inside the image. But I remember that part as being extremely smooth. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that part as it is because it looks like it's pretty well set inside of there. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enable lens correction because I was shooting this with a Canon 10 to 22. And you can kind of see what happened if you look back at the picture over here while I toggle it on and off. You can see what happens to the picture itself. So you see how it's got a little distorted there? So that lens correction undistorts it basically inside of Lightroom. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. And the last thing I'll do is I'm going to change the camera calibration from Adobe standard to camera standard. And that's just going to bring a little more variation in those color tones that really is native to the Canon 40D. And at this point, we're pretty much finished. That is how the image looks as I remember it when I was down in White Pocket, Arizona with my good friend Rich Charpentier. So that's, uh, in a nutshell, how I go through my develop module inside of Lightroom 4. It took me about four and a half minutes to explain it to you. So in reality, when I'm going through images, it won't take me more than two minutes, maybe three, to get through something. And if I've got 200 images, I'm basically spending an hour in post-production there. So maybe an hour and a half, depending on how much I'm keeping and how many edits I need to make. But that's the process that I use inside of Lightroom 4. So I'll just go from top to bottom inside of Lightroom and finish my post-production from there. 
Any questions, feel free to uh, hit me up over on the blog over at www.cannabar.com. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.